And it, it has. Will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, it will. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, you mentioned how warm it was. Mm -hmm. Here are your high temperatures today. High temps were in the 70s. Sulphur Springs it clocked in at 75. It was 74 in Mineola and Tyler. A little cooler for Jacksonville. Lufkin clocked in at 75. Now, here are your wind speeds. And part of the reason why it's so warm, we've seen those sustained winds anywhere from about 5 to 10 miles per hour. That's been dragging those warmer temperatures up. And we're still in the upper 60s and lower 70s. It's very possible we only drop a degree or two more tonight. That's how warm it's going to be to start out tomorrow morning. And as Lauren mentioned, I mean, the warmer we are, the more severe our weather is likely to be. So overnight tonight, I'm not going to rule out some patchy fog. It should only be patchy because of those winds we have in place. We could also see a little bit of drizzle, but we're only getting down to 65, 66 degrees. We will warm up again tomorrow, though. Look at this 75 severe thunderstorms expected about an 80 percent chance of showers and thunderstorms, but zooming out, I was talking about the ingredients for severe weather. It's three primary things, Gulf moisture, instability, and lift from somewhere. Here's the Gulf moisture, those southerly winds I'm talking about that's transporting all that Gulf moisture into East Texas following this warm front. It's also transporting those warmer temperatures from South Texas into our area. And then we have lift that comes in the form of a front and that is on the way and it will be arriving as we head into tomorrow night. So what does that mean for the individual ingredients for severe weather here? I am primarily concerned about the threat of damaging winds and tornadoes. First and foremost, damaging wind gust. This red shaded region right here, which encompasses the northeastern two thirds of our viewing area, we do have about a 30% chance that we do see a damaging wind gust within 25 miles of any given point here shaded in the red. Now, unfortunately, this is the area of significant tornado. That's the map we just flipped to here, and this encompasses the same area, which means these storms could rotate quickly, and there is a 10% chance, which is a decent chance when you're talking about tornadoes. 99.99% of us will not be hit by a tornado tomorrow. So, you know, that could be a bit of good news, but unfortunately conditions will be favorable for those stronger tornadoes within this region. So you really need to be weather aware for tomorrow. Let's time this out for you now. This is Futurecast again. We're going to see a little bit of moisture early tomorrow morning, maybe a few showers, maybe some drizzle, maybe some patchy fog if the wind is light enough. As we head into about 2 o'clock, storms start to initiate to our west. By 4, it starts to slide further off to the east. And then as we head into 5 o'clock, those storms become more numerous across our central counties. And then it mainly turns into a deep east Texas thing tomorrow evening. Look at this. This is 8 o'clock. Lufkin, Nacogdoches, Center, Hemphill, St. Augustine County there. We could very well see those storms. And then the front's going to push closer in our direction. We're still seeing the storms off to our south and to our east. I mentioned I'm not very confident that we're going to see any sort of flash flooding tomorrow. That could be a different story if we see training of thunderstorms or multiple storms in a short amount of time over one place in deep east Texas, given this presentation on Futurecast. Now the front's going to slide further off to the south and to the southeast, and we're done with the rain by early Tuesday morning. So breaking down the time, the timeline here from about 11 to 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, western counties, that's where you could see the storms. That's in places like Athens, Canton, Emory, Sulphur Springs, a little further off to the east. Crockett, Jacksonville, Tyler, Gilmer. It's from 2 to 8 o'clock there in the orange. If you live in the pink, Lufkin, Nacogdoches, Henderson, for example, the primary time where I want you to be weather aware will be anywhere from about 4 to midnight. So your severe weather checklist for tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. I want you in a sturdier shelter if you live in a mobile or manufactured home. Also have an emergency kit, extra snacks, non-perishable food items, water bottles, perhaps a first aid kit, and then some extra batteries. And then have two ways to receive weather alerts. One could be that East Texas Storm Team app. Another thing could be a NOAA weather radio. But after we get through tomorrow, we can take a deep breath. And we have highs in the 50s and 60s. We should remain dry until next weekend. Deep East Texas, severe storms possible tomorrow. 60s by Wednesday, only in the 50s Thursday. Lauren? Carson, thank you.